Okay, let's get started here. Our first talk will be uh, by uh, Shengqing Deng, uh, Demonstration of Sign and Magnitude Tunable Transverse Field in a Superconducting Flux Qubit. Hello. Uh, okay. Uh, so actually today I'm going to talk about something a little bit different from the abstract I um, submitted. Uh, because uh, after we submit this abstract, we realized that we're actually making a lot of uh, good progress on this more exciting topic about uh, demonstrating uh, sigma YY couplings in superconducting flux qubits. Uh, my name is Chen Chen Dan, I'm from D-Wave System. Um, okay, so uh, in the more than the past decades, so in D-Wave, we have been making the uh, icing machine or the uh, quantum annealing machine that implemented the transverse icing model. And we have been very successful doing that because uh, since uh, the transverse icing model actually uh, a lot of important and difficult problems can be implemented in that inside this problem. And more recently we have been able to success to in simulating the 3D transverse icing model using our system. However, uh, there's one problem in this Hamiltonian, which is uh, it falls into the class of uh, so-called stochastic Hamiltonian. And stochastic Hamiltonian without the sign problem, in some cases, or in a lot of cases, can be simulated by quantum Monte Carlo. So that imposes uh, significant challenges for us uh, because uh, we actually want to, demonstra to demonstrate uh, quantum advantages over, over the best cl classical simulations. And uh, here, so we were thinking of going beyond the transverse icing model, where we want to implement uh, non stochastic contents in the, in the Hamiltonian, such as sigma xx or sigma yy, that generate the sign problem, which is intrinsically hard to be simulated using these classical methods. And uh, in addition, there are, the, um, there, there, there are numerical and, uh, and a little evidence showing that uh, including trans. Uh, including non stochastic terms in the, uh, in the driver Hamiltonian actually enhance the efficiency of, uh, of quantum annealing. And in the end, uh, so implementing uh, non stochastic Hamiltonian is a step towards uh, making universal quantum computing or universal adiabatic quantum computing, is, which is eventually the things we, we want to do to fully utilize the, the power of, uh, of adiabatic quantum computer. Okay? So uh, here I just uh, spend a few minutes to re reveal uh, what we, how we implemented the, the transverse icing model in D-Wave. Uh, many of you may already be very familiar with this kind of circuit diagram where we have a, a superconducting flux qubit that uh, implemented with two control loops. One, one, uh, one is making the, the double well uh, barrier high tunable and then the other one makes the, the double well barrier uh, tilt. Uh, tunable, and and with uh, with a tunable magnetic coupling turn, uh, coupler, we actually implement the couplings between these two uh, flux qubit, and and then the uh, the transverse icing icing model written in this form faithfully represent the uh, the this couple system, and inside this uh, this Hamiltonian we have uh, icing term which is given by the sigma uh, z z, and we have a driver Hamiltonian which is the sum of the sigma x which gives us a single qubit tunneling. And uh, this, uh, the dynamic of this system can be understood in, in, the, in this uh, kind of uh, tunneling in this uh, effective 2D potential, where the four local minimums are from the computational basis of our system. Because uh, in this icing Hamiltonian, we only have a single qubit tunneling, so uh, we only have, uh, effectively, we should have only single qubit, so we should have hoppings between these two wells and these two wells. However, uh, if we actually bias the coupler in the antiferromagnetic coupling regime, where J is greater than zero, we have uh, the, the two antiferromagnetic configurations as the near degeneracy ground state. And uh, if you use perturbation theory, then you will figure that uh, there will be the effective two qubit tunneling turns arise from uh, the mediated single qubit tunnelings. And the, and the magnitude of the uh, this co-tunneling turns has a delta square divided by 2j with a minus sign in front of it. And, and then this turn is stochastic, as, uh, as we all know. Uh, however, if you want to engineer a sign problem in this system, it is not enough to basically just reverse the sign of this tunneling turn because uh, you can always do single qubit flipping to make this, uh, this negative sign, uh, or if, even if you make it positive, and then you can always make a single qubit rotations to make it uh, uh, negative again. Uh, however, 
uh, if we actually introduce another tunneling path in this system where we can make it engineer in a way that we basically couple the two flux qubit using the charge by the charge degree of freedom, uh, we can easily see that. The, so, so this kind of coupling actually gives us a Hamiltonian, which is proportional to the product of the, the charge operator of the two qubits. If you actually project this uh, interaction Hamiltonian into the icing uh, term, so what it actually gives us is basically one more additional driver Hamiltonian terms that looks like uh, single y, single y. And, and then now we create another tunneling pass in this, into, this, uh, uh, into this problem, and then we actually have a chance to demonstrate the sign problem in this system. And to see that we actually have a sign problem, uh, it is uh, very, uh, so it's very straightforward if we just uh, re written down the, the matrix, the coupling matrix element of the sigma y, y term. Here, it's very apparent that uh, it is off-diagonal, and then the off-diagonal matrix element that connected to the, the two uh, Fn configurations has a negative sign, which is the same sign as the, uh, the, uh, the two qubit cotunneling mediated by the single qubit tunneling terms. However, we notice that the, for the two AFN configurations, it's actually connected by the positive sign, which is actually a different sign of the effective uh, two qubit cotunneling terms. And this, this sign problem can be demonstrated by just looking at the spectroscopy of the system as when we have two different uh, tunneling in the system, and if this two tunneling has the same sign, they actually constructively interfere with each other, that will basically lead to this uh, Little the enhanced gap between these two qubit gap, and why when we have uh, uh, destructive interference uh, uh, between these two tunneling paths where there's a sign problem, we uh, we actually expect it to have a suppressed gap because the effective tunnelings of these two tunneling paths will actually give you the net smaller coupling uh, tunneling, but that actually leads to the smaller sign. Okay. Uh, so to probe that, we actually perform the, uh, the microwave spectroscopy. So the power sequence is actually exactly the same as uh, what Google has presented in their Fluxman paper. And to here, we actually perform single qubit spectroscopy just to, to characterize the qubit parameters. And to, to do that, we actually first zero the magnetic coupler, and, but because we have a fixed uh, charge coupler there, which is always on there, to, to probe the single qubit dynamics, we actually bias the, the, the tilde of the two qubits, we, when, uh, sorry, the, the barrier of the two qubits, so they have very different energy from each other. Uh, and to, to have the best uh, contrast uh, or the best line width, we actually focus on the, the symmetry point or the speed spot of the flux qubit. So this is the raw data of the, uh, uh, of the microwave spectroscopy for QB1 and QB2. For each uh, data scan, we actually sweep the barrier height of one QB where we tune the, the delta turn of the qubit, and, and then we also sweep the energy. And here, we actually perform the fit to the flux qubit model, which is the, uh, the multi-level system model, and then we extract all the circuit parameters, which is uh, well. Uh, and, and if you look at carefully about this coherent oscillation data, so it's in the AFN side, we actually have uh, the coherent oscillation going on on a much slower speed on the FN side. Again, which is a demonstration that we have actually achieved the opposite sign problem in the AFN configurations, why we have the same sign problems at the uh, at, uh, 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 FN configurations. Uh, okay, so, so this is the end of my talk. Uh, to summarize, so uh, I hope I convince you that I already demonstrated the uh, uh, sigma yy coupling, thing, which is a non stochastic Hamiltonian turns in our system with uh, two methods. One is a microwave spectroscopy, and then the other one is Dirac uh, time dom dynamic coherent oscillation. And, and then we, uh, we also observe the broken gauge invariance in this system, which we believe that it can be useful for a lot of problems such as optimization and sampling. Uh, in the end, I want to emphasize that uh, we actually made this system in our current fabrication steps, so we, can, we are actually ready to implement it with a large number of qubits. Thank you. So we have time for one or two questions. So your coupling uh, capacitance is almost on the order of the self capacitors. Yeah. So I want to know like scalability of this coupling scheme, whether or not we can also make it tunable. Um, 
we currently, we are thinking about making it tunable, but uh, the way we present it here is a fixed coupling. So uh, it will basically always scale as uh, the delta term. And uh, so to make it as large as uh, it is in this ex experiment, so basically we make the coupling capacitance as large as the single coupling capacitance. And uh, uh, to make it scalable, so we expect it to have uh, a relatively lower capacitance, coupling capacitance uh, than, than, this initial, uh, than this demonstration. So, so at, that will lead to uh, smaller JY couplings for sure. Yep. Another question? So is the sign of the sigma y sigma y uh, is arbitrary, the, the coupling uh, in front of it, you can change it from negative to positive or? Uh, no, in this system the, the sign of the, so, so the sign of the jy terms in the Hamiltonian is always positive. And is it true for the zz as well? Uh, in the zz terms it's tunable. So it, the, it's, it's tunable, it could be negative or positive. Yes, so it's it just, just like our uh, D-Wave processor. So, so, that, so basically that's why uh, we, we can create the sign problem when the, the JZ term is positive and the JY term is also positive. But thank you, I have uh, one quick follow-up question. So if you turn the X into a Z and the Z into an X, what happens is that you have sigma X, sigma X and sigma Y sigma Y. And uh, I think the sign problem goes away. I'm not because sigma x, sigma x, and sigma y, sigma y commute, right? So you can rotate the problem into a one with no sign problem. Is that true? Um, I have to think about that because we also have a, a single cube sigma x term. Right, it yeah. goes, it, it turns into a sigma z. It, this one goes to the diagonal term. So you, the off diagonals are going to be sigma x, sigma x, and sigma y, sigma y. Mm -hmm. So, and these commute. Uh, okay, I have to think about that. Um, I'm not sure what the I have the answer right now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let's thank the speaker again.